guys, welcome back. We are about to install the valve cover gasket and I've already cleaned everything off um, and cl cleaned this off good too, these areas. The valve cover gasket is one piece. And I've got it in right here so you can see how that goes in. Um, one thing I did do is the stock valve cover has this annoying metal hook thing that comes off the end of the valve cover and your fuel line runs underneath it, which makes it so if you ever need to remove your injectors, you have to remove the valve cover first. That's stupid. So I cut mine off. So don't have to deal with that again. But anyways, here is, here are the bolts. This is only a 10 millimeter. You got your two nuts two long bolts my uh, gasket kit came with these new little rubbery washer things so I put those on and you got seven of these little bolts and here is the torque sequence I'm gonna do and it says to torque those to seven foot pounds like my normal torque wrench doesn't register that so I'm gonna use inch pounds with the little guy, which is 84. So either do seven foot pounds or 84 inch pounds. Okay, and remember before you put the valve cover on, you've got these separating lines here between the timing chain cover and the head. They are not flush, especially this back one right here. You're supposed to put some of the uh, sealant on there first. I'm going to put a little worm right there. Okay, hopefully that's going to leave my finger a little bit exposed. Okay. Cool. And then put the cover on, let it cure, don't mess with it. Okay, also notice... I put the uh, crank pulley on so that I can line up the timing. There's the little notch. It's almost to the zero, but I wanted to see for myself when the pulley is on, it's set at zero, that the timing marks on the crank sprockets lined up where they're supposed to be too, straight up. So just for peace of mind, set the timing to top dead center again before you cover it up, just so you can just sleep at night. So that's how that looks. That's those two special washers just for those two long bolts. You got your two nuts in the front, and all the rest are those uh, short bolts. Okay, next I'm going to install the spark plugs. I'm using the NGK Iridiums. Uh, part number is 5464. So. I, I like to put a little anti-seize, not towards the sparker part, but towards the base ring right here, just a little bit. So if you ever lose one of these stuck in your uh, head, you're screwed. So just put a little bit like that. Spread it around with my finger. And then, don't just drop these in the hole, like use some long needle nose pliers so you can carefully lower these in and not damage them. Okay, got those ready. Um, torque spec for those is 13 foot pounds. Okay, now we are moving on to the water pump. This is the metal gasket, this is OEM. Let's see. So 
And here's a brand new ASIN water pump. You can see it says ASIN right there. You want to torque that to 97 inch pounds. All right, you guys, we are back in the garage and ready to finish this engine up. I took the, uh, this is the original parts off the engine. I wire brushed them really good, gave them a fresh cone of paint. Uh, to slow down rust corrosion. Um, first thing we're going to do is install the bracket or the motor mount bracket and that's going to go on these four mounting points like this. You're going to use those four bolts and you torque them to 41 foot-pounds. This is using a 14 millimeter. And next we're going to install the crankshaft pulley. Note there's that little hole in the middle right there that needs to go on that pin. That's what locks it so it can't be installed wrong and that's what controls where the pulley timing is too. So make sure you put that on right and then torque that bolt to 95 foot-pounds. I'm also going to be putting some anti-seize just on the inside of this right here because that is a that is a high friction fit area that could be a problem down the road All right, now we're going to install the water pump pulley and you torque those little three bolts to 11 foot pounds or 132 inch pounds. All right, guys, next is the fuel rail. These are remanufactured OEM injectors. Now, when I say OEM, I mean when you're shopping online, there's the part number, 23250-21020. Look for, uh, like I was thinking it says, uh, ASAN, but it's A I S A N, ASAN, but that is your OEM mark. If it does not have that, then the internals are not OEM. It is not an OEM remanufactured uh, injector. There are a lot of imposter Chinese injectors out there, so if you're shopping for OEM, make sure whoever's selling them has that. So there's the old ones. I'm keeping them because they are OEM. They still worked, but I wanted some, uh, they, when they say remanufactured, they don't actually gut the inside because it's a one cast piece. It's an electromagnet. They changed the nozzle thing on the tip right there, put on a new one of these, and they changed the ring here and changed that little insert part. 
So on these ones, you can tell that those are nice, new, clean ones. You can actually see the holes in them. There you go. That part's new. Um, I got these for like 50 bucks for a set of four. So unless you're going turbo and you're doing bigger injectors. Um, okay, next. Uh, these are the spacers. You'll notice how one end is short and one end is long. The long end goes into the engine. Like so. And then you've got three bolts. You got these two, and then this little guy. You install the injectors in the fuel rail first. You'll know when you'll know what's in when that part seats against the spacer. So you have to mess with it a little bit. There we go. Okay. This little bolt holds the fuel rail in on this side right here. Not this hole, it's the second one. Then you torque that little bolt to, let's see, oh, there it is, bolt B, 80 inch pounds. And then your two front ones, these ones, 14 foot pounds. And now it says when they're installed, you want to be able to rotate the injector. It should spin freely like this. If it binds up, then something's wrong with one of the O-rings. So. But if you can wiggle it side to side, you're good. Okay, now we're going to install the coolant bypass pipe. Here's what that looks like. And here's, here's the gasket. It does not match the shape of that thing. But here's how that goes. Kind of weird, but... Then this, this end goes underneath these pipes like this, and then bolts right there. And then of course this, uh, this goes on top like that. And then you, the two nuts, the one bolt, torque those to 80 inch pounds. On the coolant bypass pipe, there's also a bolt that goes right there. All right, now we're gonna do the thermostat. There's a new gasket on there. This one's a Toyota. What's weird, it's, it's Toyota, but it's got this uh, Kuze brand on there too. And as best as I could tell, that is the legit brand for Toyota. But we'll see. Um, so make sure this is nice and clean. Make sure the jiggle valve is pointing straight up. It goes in like this. So when I torqued this, my stud stripped. So I had to take that out. So I am going to be using two bolts instead of studs. So I don't even have to deal with it because trying to find replacements was kind of a pain. All right, guys, we're going to put on the exhaust manifold next. Here is the sequence for those uh, two bolts or sorry three bolts and two nuts um, and surprisingly you only torque those to 20 foot pounds which is like nothing but that's what it calls for and as you can see I wire brushed the bracket and painted it with some uh, barbecue 
high heat paint that's good up to 1200 degrees. Same thing with the exhaust manifold. It's the original and I just cleaned it up good. Okay, I need to show you that this gasket, when you're holding it up to the engine block, looks like it could go on either way, but the gasket is not, it's different on both sides. Let me show you what happens. So if you put it on this way, you line the bolt holes up and the center bolt hole doesn't line up. See that? makes the the holes off center so you actually have to go this way and then everything lines up which means when you're putting it on it's going to go on that way so the corner side goes to the right and the square corner goes to the left So I am, I am putting anti-seize on all these exhaust bolts because these are very prone to rusting and getting stuck. Okay, now the bracket goes on like that. And you use those three bolts and you torque those to 33 foot-pounds. All right, now we put on the heat shield. And the four little bolts, it says to torque to 70 inch pounds, but I'm just going to snug them up by hand. Okay, so next I put this bar on right there with the two 10 millimeter nuts. Then I put in the oil dipstick, repainted it, just put a new O-ring on that end, push it in. Once that lines up, put that in. And then last but not least, put a new gasket in the intake manifold. Um, I soaked this in a five gallon bucket with Dawn dish soap for a couple days. Get all that old oily grime out of there, blasted it out with a high pressure hose. Uh, and then when, after that did solvent with some carb spray, uh, get all that out of there. And then uh, we'll torque these to 22 foot pounds. All right, you guys, we have successfully rebuilt the 1NZFE. I hope this helped you guys out. Your Echo or Yaris or Scion, whatever you're driving, has got a second life now. Um, should last at least 10 more years with a new rebuild. Um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like, and leave comments, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.